Mysterious Lord Fan, what? I'm just a crude warrior. Keywords of the novel. Mystery. Starting from the warrior's path with no pop-ups, mystery. Starting from the warrior's path. Download the complete text. Mystery. Starting from the warrior's path. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Wake up. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Wake Up Bansai Port, Huang Daffodil Hotel The early morning sunshine dispelled the thick fog from last night's port of Bengalport, and shone through the window into a guest room on the second floor of the hotel, shining on the bedside. There is a young man lying on the bed in this room, with a painful expression, as if he has had some nightmare. Li Mu suddenly woke up from his dream and sat up, looking around in confusion. Some old wooden tables and chairs, unable to see the original color of the wardrobe, wooden floors and ceilings. Looking at this unfamiliar environment, Li Mu felt a bit confused. Before he had time to think, suddenly Li Mu felt a sharp pain in his head, accompanied by a massive amount of information and memory. Roman Calbo, a mixed-race son of Isaac and Wayne, had a father who was a businessman in the East Byron colony of the southern continent. He passed away in a conflict two years ago, and his mother had already passed away earlier. Without family, Roman had no intention of doing business and sold his shop, leaving only a few properties and a small estate to be taken care of by an old butler. He joined a small mercenary group with his friends and became an adventurer and hunter in the Rhodes Islands. The return mission from Port Pulitzer yesterday evening escorted a merchant ship to Bayam and stopped at Banksy Port for supplies. Who knew that suddenly, the weather in Banksy Port changed dramatically. Last night, there was a storm, and then there was thick fog. Roman had no time to return to the ship. He heard that there were some bad legends in Banksy Port, so he had to stay in a hotel. Thinking of this, Li Mu already knew where he was. Wayne, Isaac, and Bensi, I have traveled to the world of the Lord of Secrets. Limu himself is a young doctor at a small hospital in a fourth-tier city. His previous memories were still stuck in a busy night shift, but he finally had some free time to revisit the mysterious master. He probably fell asleep after being too tired, and how could he really come into this world with just one eye open? Looking at the environment in the room again, Limu sighed obediently. Although The Lord of Secrets is his favorite novel, and although he loves the protagonist Klein and a number of flesh and blood supporting role, this is a world full of mystery and madness. The life of ordinary people in this world is strange and cannot be said to be so wonderful. Wait a moment, this body doesn't seem to be an ordinary person yet. Upon examining the memories he had received, Li Mu felt even more inexplicably overwhelmed. Because he discovered that the original body, Roman Kalpo, was a warrior. The true warrior, the giant path, is the warrior of sequence 9. As a semi-mystic who is well versed in mysteries, Li Mu is familiar with all 22 extraordinary paths and has discussed with his book friends about which sequence of extraordinary beings he wants to become if he travels through a mysterious world. There are those who say, fortune tellers, or apprentices, because as long as you hold on to Shao Ku's thighs, the formulas are basically ready.made, and the sequence itself has strong enough abilities. The abilities are eerie and comprehensive, and the life.saving ability is full. As long as one does not pursue becoming a god, sailors, and readers, are also very safe. As the five paths of omniscience and omnipotence, there are also rich means. Alternatively, the Black Knight pathway is entrusted to the goddess's hands, which is also full of security, and the Black Knight pathway is extremely powerful after reaching the fifth spirit which, in the sequence. Even the voices of generalists, hunters, lawyers, and arbitrators, are high, relatively safe, with rich means, and each with their own peculiar abilities and strengths. There is no way to choose a warrior, and crude warriors, below high ranks, have limited abilities and are not strong enough. Even if they grow up, they are not safe enough, and it is difficult to guarantee that they will not be liquidated after the failure of the divine battle. 
even for the audience, although Adam hangs above his head, of course, growing up under the protection of fools like Miss Justice is not so dangerous. Wait, Adam. I thought of this name, isn't it already noticed by him? Li Mu was suddenly shocked to find that he had freely thought of the name that could not be mentioned. As a patient of PTSD in the audience, Li Mu naturally knew that in a mysterious world, knowledge is poisonous. Some names, just mentioning them, may be watched, and some things, just knowing the Tao, will be polluted, such as the starry sky Li Mu sadly realized that he couldn't control his thoughts well, and the more he couldn't think, the more he would think. Seems to have seen one's own tragic ending, just crossed over and about to die in pain. It is even possible that even death is a luxury and may turn into a monster. In Li Mu's fearful mood, time passed for an unknown amount of time. Li Mu realized that he had not experienced the pain he had imagined, and everything around him had not changed much. Although he didn't know why he was still alive, Li Mu let out a long sigh. Observe the surrounding environment and shift your attention. Li Mu stood up and walked to the mirror, looking at himself in the mirror. I don't know if it's an illusion, but Li Mu felt a dark red light flickering away from him. In the mirror was a tall and robust young man, nearly two meters tall, with black hair and blue eyes, deep contours, a square face, and no beard. I don't know if it's because he just crossed over, but Li Mu always feels that his body is not coordinated enough and he can't adapt to this powerful body. After moving in front of the mirror for a while, the sense of disharmony gradually subsided, and Li Mu felt that he had almost adapted to his current physical fitness. Waving his fist, he felt with great joy the power that could be called extraordinary in this world. The unreality gradually subsided, and he felt that he had truly entered a new world. Looking at the young man with black hair in the mirror, Li Mu nodded and whispered to himself, Hello, Roman. Roman, who had initially adapted to his body, began to carefully examine his memory. Although he didn't know what protected him from pollution, Roman still tried not to think about it and tried to distract his attention. In his original memory, the most profound ability belongs to the warrior sequence. Although he doesn't know how to play it, during the process of becoming an adventurer or hunter, due to playing the role of meat shield most of the time in the team, Roman now feels that his warrior potion should have been digested. At least for now, he doesn't feel any spiritual burden and his mental state is also good. The warrior magic potion brings strength beyond ordinary people, agility beyond ordinary people, mastery of various weapons and armor, no unusable weapons, mastery of various fighting techniques, and no fighting schools that cannot be mastered. I don't know if it's an illusion, but Roman felt that his current strength and agility had improved compared to what he remembered. Apart from that, there is no other display of extraordinary abilities, after all, he is now only a sequence 9 and just a crude warrior. But not only that, Roman looked towards the bedside, where there was a broad, two-handed sword with a pitch-black handle and some lightning-like patterns, and a broad and heavy sword body. In my memory, this was a gift from my father. The giant sword, Black Snake, was like a warrior potion, and he was also a warrior. Out of his initial expectations for his son, Roman was also trained to become a warrior. Although under the influence of his mother, Roman chose to believe in the goddess of the night. Thinking of the gentle woman who always had a smile in her memory, Roman's emotions inexplicably eased a lot. Holding the giant sword in his hand, he didn't feel heavy, giving Roman a more authentic perception of his own power. This sword is one of the most important legacies left by his father to Roman. It is an extraordinary weapon that allows the user to infuse a small amount of spiritual energy with spiritual pressure, as well as an improvement in combat ability. Injecting a large amount of spiritual energy can also stimulate spiritual piercing, which can bring spiritual pressure, concentrate spirit, puncture the target's spiritual body, and directly attack the spirit of others. The negative effect is that as the usage time increases, it will make users feel unconscious fear, and they will have to stop using it for up to one hour. After discontinuing use, the fear will gradually subside. Of course, simply carrying it will not have a strong negative effect. 
The extraordinary knowledge of the original body is very scarce and may not be well understood. Roman can probably guess the source of the abilities related to the interrogator of this sword, either the material of this sword is a part of the extraordinary characteristics of the interrogator, or it is one of the main materials of the interrogator potion, that a shiny black snake horn, combined with the extraordinary weapon made by the craftsman with relevant spiritual materials. Roman only had this extraordinary weapon, and for the extraordinary, his extraordinary abilities, along with magical items and spells, made up the overall strength of this extraordinary. Speaking of talismans, Roman took out two silver-white talismans from his arms, which were made by Tony Austin, a follower of the Storm Lord, in the team, for the team members to defend themselves. He was a Sequence 8 reasoning student who was skilled in ritual magic and making talismans. This white tin talisman is carved with special symbols on both sides. With Roman knowledge reserves, only a portion of the symbols representing the Lord of the Storm can be recognized. The opening voice is Anger in Hermes. The purpose of this talisman is to stimulate and transform angry emotions into temporary improvements in strength, speed, and agility, and to achieve excellent balance ability. The Spell of the Storm Domain, The Reasoning Student The original warrior Roman may not have thought about the possibility behind this, but now Roman obviously thinks more. The captain of this mercenary team, Fred Colt, is a angry man who is good friends with Tony and formed this mercenary team together. Roman and the other three members joined later. Angry people, reasoning students, this configuration looks like a beggar's version of the punishment agent team no matter how it looks. Fred sometimes has some special paths and tasks, isn't he really a subordinate of the Storm Church? Other members should have some guesses, that is, the previous warrior Roman did not think too much. Forget it, Roman chuckled self-deprecatingly. Who would have made him just a crude warrior? Mysterious Lord Enthusiast, Novice on the Road, thank you for your support. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Team Return. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Team Return However, if this team is a force of the Storm Church, it would be a good thing for Roman now. After all, Roman is now just a weak sequence 9, far from being able to protect himself at sea. Following the official background of the team's actions actually gives people a sense of security, moreover, through his original memory, Roman discovered that several members of the team were quite reliable. Over the past year, they had completed many tasks together and experienced some crises. Several teammates demonstrated their reliable and trustworthy character through their actions. Even Captain Fred, who is easily angered by magic potions, can control his emotions and is a very reliable companion. Roman speculates that the captain should have an extraordinary item through the spectator pathway that can help him control his emotions during battles when he doesn't need anger. Roman sorted out his memories again, confirmed that he should not have any abnormalities, and then prepared to go to the merchant ship Green Agate for this mission with his belongings. As he walked out the door, he looked at the crowds coming and going around him, the street shops and uniquely styled buildings that had already opened. Roman felt incredibly real and reminded himself once again that he had come to this real world. Suddenly, he saw a building called the Port Benny Telegraph Office on the corner street. The Roman, who was well aware of the terror hidden here, did not stop and walk straight towards the pier. However, in the dim light, he could see the floor at the entrance of the telegraph office, which seemed to have dried up and not yet cleaned up with dark red blood. With a tense mind, Roman walked away quickly until he saw the dock and the mast of the green agate. It was only then that he breathed a sigh of relief. Thanks to his strong physique and the broad sword behind him, he did not encounter any unhappy things along the way. Just as Roman was standing and looking at the mast of the green agate, he suddenly felt a gust of wind behind him. Roman took a step forward to dodge, then turned around and saw a skinny young man holding up his hand, looking awkwardly at Roman. Philogen Morris, whose name was found in his memory, was a teammate of the Roman team and also his good friend, a physician. Learning from his memory, Roman smiled and placed his hand on Phil Logan's shoulder, pulling him forward. 
Ignoring Phil Logan's protest, he smiled and asked, Why are you here, Captain? Philogen, who was not a match for Roman in terms of physique and strength, looked helpless and didn't look up at Roman. He said, The weather changed too quickly last night. This morning, the captain asked me to come down to replenish the medicine and wait for you on the shore. You didn't come back last night, did you? Feeling cared for, Roman's heart warmed. He tugged harder at Philogen's shoulders and neck, but still smiled and said, What can I do? I just slept in the hotel all night. The two of them playfully returned to the green agate, of course, mainly because Roman was fighting. I greeted my teammates on the ship and learned that the ship would set sail again in two hours. Afterwards, there will be no stopover and a direct journey to the destination of Byam. Tony said that it may be because Mr. Downton, the employer, was frightened by the abnormal changes in Port Benny last night, so he chose to set sail as soon as possible and stay away from here. Roman certainly had no objection to this, and even after communicating with a few members of the team, everyone felt that the correct choice was to work on Port Bengway as soon as possible. As the huge sails unfolded, the green agate slowly departed from the dock and headed towards Byam. The green agate is a huge steamship with sails that can sail at a faster speed. The members of the Seagull squad also gathered together to discuss future plans. It is worth mentioning that the name Seagull Squad was unanimously agreed upon by Captain Fred Coulter, and everyone has some complaints about it. Roman also saw all the teammates of the team. The captain, with a strong physique and obviously young age, insists on keeping a beard at the edge of his mouth. He has brown hair and brown eyes, broad shoulders, and is the furious man of Series 8, Fred Colt. Tony Austin, a young detective student with a slender figure, short stature, black short hair, and golden framed glasses, exudes a scholarly temperament. A woman with outstanding appearance, prominent blonde hair, delicate and soft facial features, especially a pair of exceptionally bright blue eyes. She is of average height and slender figure, and is Tony's friend, Hannah Harrison, a martial arts scholar in Sequence 8. Just went downstairs to search for Roman's good friend, Philogen Morris, the team physician. He was thin, with brown hair and blue eyes, and high cheekbones. He sat at the table, staring at the two bottles of medicine in his hand in a daze. There was also a lady with a cool demeanor sitting quietly on the side, not participating in the conversation. She had some southern continental appearance, black-shouldered long hair, slightly dark skin, tall, thin figure, and shallow facial features. Sitting there gave off a cold feeling, Emily Carter. The corpse collector of Sequence 9. This is all the members of the Seagull Squad, although they are not many, they are all extraordinary. Such an extraordinary team is almost catching up with the official extraordinary team of the church in small cities of ordinary diocese, except for a slightly inferior seal. Roman was lost in thought when he heard the captain lightly tap on the table. Fred didn't speak until everyone turned their heads to look at him. Following the normal route, we will arrive at Byam tomorrow night. After arriving at the port, our mission is completed. After that, I will distribute everyone's remuneration. Each person can receive about fifty pounds. Fred said with a smile, Thank you Mr. Downton for his generosity. After watching everyone around, Fred continued, After this mission is over, we will plan a brief stay in Byam. Tony and I will leave the team temporarily if we have something to do. Everyone will take action separately. Seven days later, at 8 p.m. on May 13, we will meet at the Swordfish Bar. After he finished speaking, everyone started chatting with each other. Roman is also contemplating his next actions. After arriving at Byam, it was time for Roman to continue collecting the potion materials of the 8th fighter, which was something Roman had been doing all along. From his memory, Roman discovered that he had already obtained the potion formula from the fighter and collected a main material, 10 milliliters of purple-striped cheetah spinal fluid, as well as auxiliary materials such as 10 milliliters of purple-striped cheetah blood, 5 drops of purple-edged golden peony essential oil, 10 grams of mountain fire velvet powder.
and pure water that could be prepared at any time. The only missing main material, a pair of Antares Snow Wolf's eyes, also has a clue. After this mission ends, you can find the previous channel by returning to Bayam. Roman was originally planning to return to Bayam for promotion after the mission ended, but unexpectedly, there was an unknown accident halfway through. On May 5th, the night of the Blood Moon. At night, after dinner, Roman returned to his room, thinking about his future path, promotion in sequence, future direction, and even faith. Just confirmed with my teammates that today is May 5th, 1349. To be honest, Roman breathed a sigh of relief when he found out today's date. He arrived earlier than Mr. Fool. By calculation, there are less than two months left until the arrival of Mr. Fool, and I still have more than three months of safe time. When Mr. Fool arrives, the disasters in this world will come wave after wave, and one must have some self-protection ability before that. Roman was lost in thought when suddenly a commotion came from outside. Roman heard someone knocking on the door of the captain's room next door. Immediately afterwards, a soft shout came from outside. Captain, there's a pirate ship. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Pirate Squad You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Pirate Squad Upon hearing the sound, Roman immediately stood up, picked up his giant sword, the black snake, and arrived on the deck. There is already a mess on the deck now. The sailors were frantically running back to their posts, and upon hearing the sound, the passengers rushing to the deck saw a distant sailboat with a chimney emitting thick smoke, which made them nervous. Roman walked up to the captain and looked at the pirate ship in the distance, asking, Captain, what's the situation? Tony next to him answered casually, the Blood Sail Pirates, a small and medium-sized pirate group, has a captain named Oster, Blood Hand with a bounty of £1,000, a first mate named Henderson, a Iron Hook with a bounty of £600, and a second mate named Germer, Mighty with a bounty of £400. Captain Fred nodded and continued, it's strange that the route to Bayam should be safe. There are colonial islands that dock every few days, and there are often Royal Navy and Stormwind Church ships patrolling along the way. Where did Oster have the courage to come and plunder merchant ships? Especially for large merchant ships like the Green Agate, which are equipped with several guns on both sides and many crew members. Tony, as he sorted out his talismans, said, perhaps he came to plunder at night and planned to stay away from the patrolling Royal Navy in Stormwind Church ships when dawn broke. Regardless of the reason, be prepared for battle. Roman, Captain Fred shouted, if there is a docking battle later, you and I will be responsible for keeping an eye on Oster on the opposite side, finding an opportunity to quickly kill him, Tony, finding an opportunity to use the sun ring. Understood. Got it, Captain, Captain. Hannah, who had been observing the situation, ran over. There is no intention of negotiating on the opposite side, we are accelerating the adjustment of direction and preparing to dock. Captain Fred frowned at the words. According to common sense, both sides should engage in a confrontation and engage in multiple rounds of artillery fire, possibly even circling in dozens of circles. After all, pirates usually avoid engaging in port battles. It is more reasonable to first use stronger artillery to eliminate living forces, and then engage and clean up the mess. As a well-known pirate, Oster actually launched a direct docking battle against a large merchant ship with relatively strong firepower that was completely unknown. But there's not enough time to think about the reality. Roman, prepare for battle. Emily, pay attention to your spirit at night. Hannah, protect Tony and Emily. Fred gave the order and drew his sword from his waist, ready for battle. Roman also untied the black snake giant sword from behind. However, the captain's reminder to Emily just now made Roman suddenly realize a problem. When did he have night vision ability? According to memory, the Roman Empire did not have dark vision in the past. But after boarding the deck, Roman found himself able to see the details of the ship without the need for lighting, and it seemed that his vision had greatly improved. 
He could see the blood sail at some distance in the darkness, and could see the bright red handprints on the fluttering flags. However, now is not a good time to explore. The blood sail has already approached the green agate. Captain Gordon of the green agate was also quite experienced. After calming the passengers back into the cabin, he found that the pirates were approaching. Even at this time, he thought it would be best to negotiate and solve the problem to avoid unnecessary casualties. Although he had to pay some pounds, this was a price that could be paid in the face of fame and life. Just before he could open his mouth, an arrow shot straight at him in the darkness. Captain Gordon dodged sideways and the arrow was nailed to the deck behind him. Immediately afterwards, the pirates began to board the ship. Captain Gordon knew that the battle was inevitable, and although he didn't understand why the pirates chose to engage in port battles so decisively, in the current situation, there was only battle. Roman looked at the pirates about to board the ship in front of him. Although he had already experienced multiple battles and was considered experienced, Roman now faced his first battle in this world, which inevitably made him a little nervous. In the darkness, Romain recognized the captain across from him at a glance, Blood Hand Oster. That was a tall man with a typical southern appearance and a crazy face. Roman could even see the dense bloodstains in Oster's eyes. He held a short knife in his hand and rushed straight onto the ship. Under his leadership, a group of pirates waved their weapons and shouted slogans that they didn't know the meaning before charging towards the crowd of the Green Agate. As the strongest captain on the green agate, Fred, wielding his piercing sword, the Sword of Prediction, directly approached Oster. Oster, holding a short knife, stabbed Captain Fred directly in the chest. Along the way, he could twist his body, flip his wrist, and the knife turned to stab Captain Fred's left rib. However, Captain Fred seemed to have anticipated and slashed his bayonet diagonally downwards towards Oster's hand holding a short knife. Oster could only dodge the piercing sword with a short body, roll along with the momentum, and dodge the second attack that followed from the splitting to the piercing. The second mate of the blood sail, giant power, Germo, was slow in speed. As soon as he arrived on the battlefield, he saw that his own captain seemed to be at a disadvantage and wanted to go over and help. And Roman originally intended to assist the captain in attacking Oster according to the original plan, but when he saw the giant Germo wanting to join the battle, he swung the black snake directly towards Germo. Germo could only watch as his own captain gradually fell into the wind and swung his sword to confront Roman. Roman was a bit nervous when facing the enemy for the first time. He noticed that the opponent was tall, similar to himself, and seemed to be a warrior. He wanted to test the opponent's strength first, so he swung his giant sword and collided with it. With a bang, Roman didn't move, while Germo took two steps back. Roman noticed that the opponent's strength seemed to be inferior to his own, and he continued to chop towards Germo. Germo himself was slow and not as agile as Roman, so he could only raise his sword to face the battle. After a few rounds, Roman gradually realized that although the opponent was also a warrior, their strength, agility, and reaction were far inferior to his own. Since that's the case, then find a way to quickly fight and support the captain. And Jelmer also realized something was wrong. He was a warrior, but not a fool. The warrior on the other side was clearly stronger than himself. Unfortunately, Roman didn't give him more time to react. The next chopping had already arrived. After the two swords collided, Roman didn't choose to continue chopping. Instead, he pressed down sharply along the intersection of the two swords. At the same time, two lightning bolts suddenly lit up in Roman's blue eyes, piercing his spirit. Originally numb from the continuous chopping and shaking of his hands, Germer felt the immense force emanating from his sword blade and was about to launch a counterattack. Suddenly, he felt the pressure from his spiritual body, which dealt a blow to his spirit. His entire body suddenly froze. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Roman suddenly exerted all his strength without reservation, directly pressing the opponent's giant sword down onto Germer's body. When he was unresponsive, he directly split open his unprotected body. 
Blood sprayed out, and Germer, nicknamed Julie, a well-known pirate worth 400 pounds, lost his life in this way. End of this chapter. Chapter 4. Victory. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Victory Before he had time to lament his first encounter with death and blood, Roman suppressed the faint fear emanating from his sword hilt and pulled out the black snake to look at Captain Fred. Seeing that the captain was still on the upper hand, but Oster across from him seemed to have noticed Germer's death, his eyes suddenly turned red, and his attack speed suddenly increased, his strength also increased, and he once suppressed the captain. Captain Fred let out a roar upon seeing the situation, and his strength and speed instantly increased. This is the angry people. Roman was about to step forward to assist the captain when he suddenly heard Tony's shout from a distance. Captain. Pacify. The captain, who was in the midst of releasing his anger, heard this shout and immediately understood Tony's meaning. He turned to Oster and activated the ring of the mind worn on his left hand. Soothing. Oster originally voluntarily sacrificed his rationality and burst into desire in exchange for strength, achieving improvement in all aspects. However, after receiving treatment from a psychologist, his rationality slightly recovered, accompanied by a decrease in strength and speed, and he was unable to keep up with the rhythm of an angry people. Roman. Upon hearing Tony's shout, Roman understood his meaning and immediately joined the battle with a giant sword. Oster, who was originally in a declining stage of strength, had already found it difficult to deal with a furious people who could predict his attack. Suddenly, a warrior joined the battle, especially a strengthening warrior who had inexplicably strengthened his strength and agility. After partially regaining his sanity, Oster knew he was not an opponent. There was no time to marvel at the fact that the escort team on an ordinary merchant ship was a complete team of extraordinary people, and there were two strong men no less than his own strength. Oster knew that if he didn't find a way to leave, he might end up dying here. Suddenly, he rolled and charged towards romance. Quickly and seriously injuring an enemy is the only way to escape, and a warrior is inevitably easier to defeat than a angry people who are releasing their anger. Roman probably guessed his thoughts, but as a warrior, he swung his knife directly towards him. When Oster's short sword was struck, he suddenly realized that the warrior in front of him, even wielding his giant sword, was no slower than himself. Ding, the short sword collided directly with the giant sword. Oster noticed a tremendous force passing through his hand along the short knife, causing him to almost lose control of the knife. Before he could react, a second attack had already arrived. This time it's not a chopping, it's a horizontal shot. Oster had no time to swing his knife and could only turn his wrist to counterattack with the hilt. Unfortunately, he faced Roman who used all his strength to strike horizontally. Oster felt a tremendous force coming from his arm, followed by a sharp pain, causing his arm to break. Feeling his injury, Osman no longer had the courage to face the enemy and wanted to step back. Unfortunately, Captain Fred had already arrived. As Osman retreated, a stabbing sword directly stabbed him in the retreat path. The Sword of Prediction He was predicted to be in the right position and had no way to escape, only to watch helplessly as the piercing sword pierced into his heart. Pop! Oster fell to the ground, blood gushing out of his heart, and he gradually lost his breath. Captain Fred, who had solved the strong enemy, did not rest. His gaze scanned the small battlefield in other directions and he saw Iron Hook Henderson being besieged and about to be defeated. And Henderson also noticed the situation here. In panic, he was distracted and was hit by Tony, who had found the opportunity, with consecutive revolvers. Before Roman wanted to help, he fell to the ground and couldn't get up. After Tony killed Henderson, he once again ignited the sun ring in his hand. Courage is the halo of the sun. The sailors within twenty meters saw the light and saw that the three leaders of the pirates had been killed. They gained tremendous courage and charged towards the remaining pirates. The pirates, upon discovering that their captain had died, 
were even more reluctant to fight. Some dropped their weapons and surrendered on their knees, while others panicked and chose to jump into the sea to escape. Some wanted to run back to the blood sail, but were killed on the road before they could return. After about two quarters of an hour, the battle came to a complete halt. During this period, Roman did not take any action and only accompanied Philogen to maintain order on the ship, intimidated the prisoners, and treated the wounded on board. The prisoners looked at Roman, at the man who almost cut the second pair of giant powers in half with one knife, and no one dared to say a word more. They were extremely obedient. Thanks to the aura of courage, the negative effects of the black snake giant sword have been eliminated. As for discussing bonuses and follow dot up matters with Captain Gordon and his employer, of course, the captain and Tony will handle it. It's not an illusion, my strength, speed, and agility have all been strengthened, much stronger than the warriors who are also in sequence 9. I feel like even when facing the captain, I won't fall behind. Roman summarized the battle he had just fought, after all, it was his first kill. However, it was unclear whether his original senses were at work, and even if he almost cut the enemy in half, Roman did not feel any discomfort. Perhaps this is a warrior. Roman glanced at the blood moon in the sky and knew that she had completely integrated into this world. After being affected for a while, Roman recalled today's incident and found it somewhat suspicious. Other pirates are not sure, but, Blood Hand, Oster, judging from his ability to sacrifice his rational explosive power in the end, should be a, madman. A, madman, who is also at sea is likely a peripheral force of the, Rose sect, or a subordinate pirate of the, Blood General, Senio. How could such a pirate group with a background appear on a safe route for no reason, plundering an ordinary merchant ship? The Influence of Blood Moon causing him to lose his sanity. Due to the lack of more information, Roman could only analyze this. After a long time, things on board were probably settled, and Captain Fred signaled for them all to return to the cabin. It's time for the intense and thrilling, spoils sharing, stage. Killing the main cadres of the, blood sail, pirate group, completely destroying the pirate group, and capturing the, blood sail, together, can be said to be a fruitful harvest. Tony gave a detailed introduction to the harvest, not to mention that the people on board raised a thank you money for the team after the incident. Just talk about the extraordinary characteristics of the harvest, the bounty that can be claimed, and the belongings on the blood sale. Roman can receive 300 pounds in cash, as well as a bounty from the powerful Germer, and Germer's extraordinary qualities. The total value is nearly 1,000 pounds, far exceeding the already generous remuneration for bodyguard missions. The captain himself does not want to accept the so-called gratitude money, after all, logically speaking, this incident is also within the scope of the bodyguard's responsibilities. Unfortunately, the gentlemen were too enthusiastic and had no choice but to accept it with tears in their eyes. However, Roman could also understand that suddenly encountering a wave of well-known pirates, it was normal for everyone who thought they were unlikely to escape to pay some money to buy themselves a sense of security after experiencing great ups and downs. Moreover, we can also establish a good relationship with the Seagull Squad. The merchants who frequently travel between the Ruin and Rothschild Islands also hope to meet some reliable, powerful, and reputable adventurers. Roman also received his spoils of war, a tin box containing a brown metal emitting a faint light, which was the extraordinary feature of a warrior. However, this also shook Roman's previous speculation. Does the captain not have a background in the storm church? How else would one handle extraordinary characteristics arbitrarily? Moreover, it is not common knowledge among low-sequence extraordinary individuals that extraordinary characteristics will emerge after their death. Is it the Knowledge Church infiltrating the waters of the Rothschild Islands to gather intelligence? Is Captain and Tony, who have always claimed to be the Lord of the Storm, not afraid of being punished? I don't know if it's being too cautious, but the world of calculation in the original work made Roman feel a bit scared. Everything Roman encounters now has a feeling of, there must be something fishy about it. However, 
this should have nothing to do with the influence of the original body. After all, the original body is just a crude warrior, and besides fighting, there is no spiritual intuition, right? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Arrival You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Arrival The next afternoon, Roman, who was invited to the first dot-class restaurant with his teammates to enjoy lunch, once again felt a warm gratitude. Several influential businessmen organized a banquet at the first dot-class restaurant. Captain Fred and Tony are fine, and several travelers even started drinking with Roman, who appears to have a Flemish heritage. If it were in Rune, gentlemen with a certain status would not be so indulgent, but this is at sea, and everyone who has just experienced a baptism of life and death still let go of their restraint. The red wine for the banquet was provided by Maxie Wade, a large wine merchant from Beckland, who even teamed up with Romance to create South Wales red wine. Unfortunately, he was not a match for Romance and had already passed away drunk. South Wales red wine is a well-known red wine produced in ruined South Wales and is quite expensive. Another excited-looking gentleman is Odes Pelik, an associate professor in the Department of Archaeology at Beckland University. He is a gentleman with silver hair, gold-framed glasses, and looks quite elegant. However, at this moment, he was also slightly tipsy. Roman was actually quite curious about the experience of this archaeologist, just to maintain his persona and did not have much in-depth communication with him. In this elegant restaurant, in a lively atmosphere, Roman enjoyed his first big meal since coming to this world. Charcoal grilled small steak, Pulitzer fried fish, bacon, grilled chicken, creamy broth, and vegetable salad. Roman finished the last sip of South Wales red wine in his glass and finished the sumptuous lunch. The subsequent journey was very calm, with clear and sunny weather. The blue waves on the sea gently undulated, and silver-white flying fish sometimes jumped out of the sea and soared in mid-air. Roman felt the rare tranquility amidst this beautiful scenery, and before evening arrived, he arrived at the capital of the Rothschild Islands, the City of Generosity, of Bayam. This is also known as the Spice Islands, with a variety of exotic spices, and plantations in this area serve as the backbone of the economy. The small estate inherited by Roman from his father is like this. The Blue Mountain Island, where Bayam is located, occupies more than half of the land area of the archipelago, with mineral deposits such as gold, silver, copper, coal, and iron. It has a high forest coverage, a variety of fruit varieties, and exceptionally fertile land. Therefore, the first group of colonizers named the city they built by the seaside as the City of Generosity believing it to be the promised treasure trove of milk and honey wine by the gods. Roman packed his luggage, carried a huge sword, left the room and entered the aisle leading to the deck. After arriving in Bayam, the bodyguard mission was considered completed. Just as he was about to disembark, he saw Associate Professor Odes Pielik and his assistant in the distance. Odes Pielik also saw Roman and quickly walked up to him, saying, Mr. Culper, how can I get in touch with you if I want to ask for your help? Roman looked at the captain behind him. Seeing him nod slightly, he smiled and said to Associate Professor Pielek, Our team may not stay in Bayam for the long term. If you need help in the near future, you can advertise in the Bayam News for Seagull brand South Wales Red Wine, with the address attached. If there is no response for three consecutive days, it means we have left Bayam. The captain behind him then spoke up, if there is a need for help in Pulitzer Port, Demir Island, or Tiana Island, we can also try our luck in a similar way. If we happen to have members nearby, we can also provide help. The members of the Seagull Squad are relatively free, and they can also take on tasks during their free time. Their activities mainly cover the coast of Ruin and the Sea of Sunia. Okay. Associate Professor Pielik, wearing golden framed glasses, expressed his gratitude again and left the ship's side with his assistant. After greeting some passengers and crew members, Roman, who was separated from his teammates, left the port alone and prepared to return to his residence along the remembered road. 
As for the commotion caused by bringing a pirate ship into the port, it is naturally up to Captain Fred and Tony to handle how to arrange for the captured pirates and collect the bounty. Waves of sea breeze blew by, and the sharp leaves swayed and fell at any moment. Roman followed the route in his memory for a long time and arrived at a single family house located on Maple Avenue. This is one of the unsold properties left by my father, located in the central southern part of the city of Bayan, far from the dock. The reason why I chose to live here is because it is not far from the St. Helena Church of the Bayan Night Goddess Church, and as a believer of the Night Goddess, it is safer to choose here. On the sea, due to the low number of women, there are more followers of the Lord of the Storm, and the number of churches in the Night Church is relatively small. In the Rothschild Islands, the central church is this St. Helena Church. Only in overseas colonies where there is not strict regulation of wild extraordinary beings can they enjoy relative freedom here. As long as there is no disturbance, the authorities will turn a blind eye. After returning home and tidying up a bit, Roman set off for the nearby St. Helena Church. As a Roman who became a follower of the night goddess from a young age under the influence of his mother, he would come to the church to pray before and after each voyage. Roman entered the church and walked along the aisle towards the large prayer hall. Although it was already evening, there were not many people inside the prayer hall. Romance walked all the way, through the narrow high window adorned with fine red and blue patterns, strands of colored light seeped in, like the night or the red moon, setting off an unusually dark surroundings. Roman walked quietly down the aisle, casually finding a spot near the aisle, and slowly sat down. Lowering his head, he drew a crimson moon on his chest and began to pray softly. After a long time, Roman, who had completed his prayer, slowly stood up and walked out of the prayer hall. After greeting the familiar Bishop Anna, he left the church. According to the plan, Roman arrived at the Golden Lemon Bar located in the dock area. Ronnie, a big glass of Zara. Roman patted the bar and skillfully threw a 5p coin to the bartender. This is a specialty malt beer, which is cheap and has a good flavor, and is loved by adventurers. Bartender Ronnie glanced at Roman and skillfully drank a large glass of Zara, handing it to him. He whispered, Mr. Sotos is on the second floor, in the boss's room. Roman nodded, didn't say a word, and started drinking Zara beer from his glass. After sitting at the bar listening to no useful information around for a while, Roman finished the last bit of Zara from his cup, put down his cup, and walked towards the second floor. At the corner of the stairs, the two bodyguards glanced at Roman but didn't speak. They turned around and let him in. At the door of the boss's room, Roman patted the door and walked in without waiting for a response inside. Inside is a middle-aged man in his thirties, with a bronze skin, deep sunken eye sockets, and deep black whiskers on the lips, upper and lower jaw. It looks like a person who often floats on the sea. His name is Sotos Young, the owner of this bar and a friend of Roman's father. He has always taken good care of Roman. Of course, he also has an identity as a senior member of the Adventure Mutual Aid Association. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Promotion you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Promotion Roman, who had memories of the original work, naturally knew of the Adventurers Mutual Aid, a loose alliance formed by adventurers on the sea, mainly operating in the waters of the Rothschild Islands and the Central Sunny and Sea Islands to the east. This alliance has little binding force and aims to guide adventurers to help each other, as well as to sell and purchase items at relatively reasonable prices within this alliance. It is a relatively loose alliance organization with no obvious good or evil tendencies, and in memory, this Sotos Young appeared briefly in the original work. Your team suddenly did something big, Roman, Sotos Young, wearing a brown jacket, saw Roman come in and sat behind the table without standing up. He spoke first. Are you saying, blood sail, dot? Roman didn't have any doubts in his heart, but he still asked back. Yeah, I just saw the intelligence sent below. You drove a pirate ship directly into the port, but there was a lot of commotion. 
Sotos Young nodded and gestured for Roman to sit down and speak. Tell me the specific situation. What happened all the way? As Roman sat down, Sotos continued to speak. What can a pirate with a bounty of only one thousand pound make a name for themselves in Bayam? Roman first said with a half-smile, and then briefly recounted his experience of travelling from Port Pritzport, passing through Bansi, encountering a huge change in weather, and later encountering the Blood Sail pirate group in a safe passage, but did not mention any changes he had made in Bansi, nor did he mention anything about being reinforced again. After chatting for a while, Roman revealed the main purpose of his visit. Come and purchase the final main material of the 8th Fighter series, a pair of Antares Snow Wolf's eyes. This is the material that Roman had pre-ordered from the Adventurer Mutual Aid before going out to sea. Sotos opened the safe, took out a tin box from inside, and handed it to Roman. Taking the tin box from Sotos's hand, he opened it and saw a pair of grey-white eyes inside. Roman could feel that this was the material he needed. The eyes of Antares Snow Wolf. Thank you, Uncle Sotos. Look at this, can I use it to offset the cost of this material? Roman also took out a tin box and handed it to Sotos, which contained the extraordinary characteristics of the warrior from the giant germer. Sotos Young clearly recognized what it was, looked at Roman, and said with a smile, the material you need is worth 300 pounds, but the process of bringing it from Isaac is more complicated. If you give me this, the value of the material is about 400 pounds, and I will provide you with the remaining 100 pounds in cash. Roman didn't make any excuses and took a stack of banknotes. Putting the tin box away, Roman looked at Sotos and said goodbye. Roman, Sotos Young called out softly as he walked to the door. Be careful at every step of this path. If you feel like you're not ready yet, don't rush to get promoted. Don't be blinded by hatred. Your safety is more important than anything else. Roman turned around, looked at Sotos, felt his concern, didn't say anything, just nodded heavily, turned around and left the room. With important materials on his body, Roman didn't stay too long. He came out of the Golden Lemon Bar and directly returned to his other residence in the dock area. This can also be considered a safe house prepared by Roman, where everything related to extraordinary knowledge is prepared, such as a small number of books with extraordinary knowledge, and a simple workbench that can be used to make temporary materials. Of course, as a warrior, I hardly ever read those books. After returning to the residence located in the dock area, Roman did not rush to dispense magic potions. Instead, he carefully inspected the inside and outside of the house and did not find any abnormalities. As this was a two-dot story building with seven or eight rooms, Roman carefully inspected it before returning to his study, which was also a simple laboratory. Although he was running around today, there was no battle. Roman felt that his current state was still very full, and decided to mix magic potions tonight to try promotion. He first cleaned the spare beaker and test tube, recalled the process of preparing the original warrior potion, and compared some memories from the original work. Roman first distilled the pure water needed for the magic potion. Then take out the prepared auxiliary materials from the safe. Starting with pure water, place it in a large beaker one by one. 50 milliliters of pure water, 10 milliliters of blood from purple cheetahs, 5 drops of purple edge golden peony essential oil, and 10 grams of powder from alpine edelweiss. Watching the light red liquid with brown powder floating in the beaker, Roman took a deep breath and placed the two main materials, 10 milliliters of purple striped cheetah spinal fluid and a pair of Antares snow wolf eyes, in sequence. I saw a sudden change in the color of the originally light red liquid in the beaker, gradually deepening from light to dark. With the emergence of bubbles, the liquid in the beaker gradually changed, like a constantly wriggling human shape, and finally returned to calm. Roman poured the calmed potion into the prepared glass and obtained a small bottle of light brown liquid, with no residue inside the beaker. It doesn't look very delicious. Sitting at the table, taking a deep breath, Roman didn't hesitate and drank the liquid from the glass. Gulu. 
It's really not tasty. Roman felt a strong bitterness mixed with a strong sense of spiciness, reaching his stomach down his throat. This is a coffee that is even more bitter than the bitterest coffee he has ever tasted in his past life, with a devilish spicy sensation that made Roman instantly feel his stomach protesting, as if he wanted to vomit. However, the vomiting sensation did not last long, and soon after, Roman felt a fever all over his body, like a needle-pricking sensation that instantly spread throughout his body. Fortunately, he was sitting in a chair, otherwise Roman suspected that he could no longer stand under this piercing pain. Roman could only grip the armrest of the chair tightly, enduring the intense pain. As Roman closed his eyes and endured the pain, he didn't notice a faint dark red light flickering around him. After an unknown amount of time, Roman felt like he had recovered from his painful numbness and was able to feel and control his body again. Roman opened his eyes and saw the furniture in the room, gradually recovering from the pain brought by the potion. As the pain completely dissipated, Roman realized that he had completed his promotion and become the fighter in sequence 8. I restrained my excited thoughts and adjusted my mood. Roman stood up and moved his body. Punching, arm swinging, squatting, kicking Roman was in this room, moving around with his bare hands, feeling the new changes he had brought after taking the potion. Slowly, with the understanding of new abilities and the adaptation to new physical qualities, Roman's expression also gradually became puzzled. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Doubts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Doubts Firstly, Roman felt that he had digested a portion of his potion just after taking it, which may be due to his success as a warrior despite not knowing how to play. So it is not difficult to understand that a portion of the fighter potion is digested. The portrayal of a fighter means constantly engaging in combat. In Roman's view, combat should include both unarmed combat and equipment combat. So looking at the low to medium sequence of the warrior's path in this way, it still seems relatively simple to play, just need to constantly fight. Or at least it all requires constant combat, and regardless of other playing requirements, combat is the core and key to this approach. So in future performances, we should also seek more opportunities for combat, and of course, there is never a lack of combat on the sea. The Fighting Master potion also brings further improvement in physical fitness. Perhaps thanks to having already digested a portion of the potion, Roman felt that his current body was more than 50% stronger than his warrior self. Including strength, agility, bouncing, reflexes, and more, one sense of balance, coordination, and physical flexibility have also been further improved. The specific improvement may still need to be better grasped through practical combat. Moreover, Roman knew that as a fighter, his physical fitness had greatly improved, partially reducing the influence of supernatural powers and developing a certain level of resistance to supernatural abilities such as spells, similar spells, and mental impact. This is adding magic resistance. Roman thought to himself. Another thing that comes to mind is a plethora of combat techniques, which enable one to use their body more effectively and strike enemies through different combat techniques. The body of a fighter is his best weapon, and the role of a fighter is probably to become familiar with the process of mastering this weapon. These are all abilities that Roman can directly understand and enhance by taking the fighting master potion, which is also in line with his understanding of the warrior path as a half-mystic. Although stronger than imagined, it is not particularly significant. The following is where Roman feels puzzled. Romance could feel that in addition to the conventional fighter abilities mentioned above, she had acquired an ability that could be described as influencing the emotions of enemies through language and behavior. This is very strange. As a semi-mystic, Roman has a certain understanding of the abilities of various extraordinary pathways. In stage 8 of the sequence, there are several similar abilities that can influence others through language and behavior, provoke their emotions. The sequence 8 of the audience pathway is mind reader. However, in order for a mind reader to achieve similar goals, the core ability should be guidance, which guides others' actions and emotions through language and action hints. 
In addition, there is also the sequence 8 of the thief pathway, fraudster. But the ability of fraudsters is more through personal charm, persuasion through eloquence, and sometimes with certain mental interference, to achieve fraud and influence others' behavior. Basically, it can be ruled out, so there are only the last two sequences left. The challenger of the hunter pathway sequence 8, as well as the assassin or witch pathway sequence 8, the instigator. Among them, the main extraordinary ability possessed by provocateurs is to attract hatred. Faced with communicable enemies, they provoke them with unintentional words and actions, such as targeted insults, and even a word or action can make the enemy lose their rationality and be burned by anger. And for non-communicable beasts and monsters, they can actively emit feelings that make them hate them. The instigator, on the other hand, incites people's evil desires, intensifies conflicts, and instigates conflicts through seduction, induction, and persuasion. Roman recalled these pieces of knowledge and compared them to his current abilities, only to find that they seemed somewhat similar, but there was no sequence that could fully fit. My current ability is more like a type of provocative ability, using words and actions to make enemies feel disgusted and disgusted, thereby affecting their emotions and achieving effects similar to provocation and ridicule. There is a weakened combination of instigators and provocateurs. Roman suddenly recalled something. That was when I woke up in Port Benny, and there was a faint layer of dark red light on my body in the mirror. I didn't pay much attention when I woke up, but now I think it's still very strange. Banksy Port, Binchy, with a dim red glow and improved physical fitness, inexplicably gained new abilities through the assassin and hunter pathways. Roman had a guess in his heart. Shouldn't I have been polluted by the city of disaster? After reading the original work thoroughly and knowing what kind of terrifying Roman there was in Port Benny, it seems like a reasonable guess. So the question is, how did you survive? If it is true that the city of disaster has polluted itself through sealing, how did one not lose life or become an uncontrollable monster under the pollution of the source material or the old position? Not only did they survive, but they also gained the ability to belong to the two sequences of the city of disaster. The knowledge belonging to the past in the original work, let alone being exposed to it, even if it is only known, will be contaminated and even true gods dare not touch it casually. So why should I? Or is it not without paying the price? Is the original death the price? What am I now? Why didn't I go crazy and lose control? On the contrary, one gains the ability and blessing to shield oneself from contamination from high-dot-level knowledge when thinking of knowledge related to external gods, starry sky, old days, and source matter. In a moment of thought, Romance began to speculate about some details of the original work. I don't think I am a dependent person, do I? The city of disaster, through the power of the heavenly seal, has influenced reality in oneself, making oneself like a dependent or contact. This is the association that arises from the fragments of the uncertain fog and the Tamara family mentioned later in the original work, guessing the state of the uncertain fog, combined with the fact that one should be in contact with the city of disaster and their current state. So, how did I connect with the city of disaster? As a crude warrior, I can be said to be completely inexperienced in ritual magic and various mystical knowledge, coupled with the low level of mystery in this path. Romance has never performed any rituals related to sacrifice, association, gaze, or favor, nor is she familiar with any related spells. If it is truly a city of disaster, how does it affect oneself? Just because I came to Port Benghazi. This left Roman at a loss. Moreover, Roman now hardly knows any ritual magic, and his knowledge of mysticism, rituals, spells, and runes such as prayer and sacrifice is only limited to his understanding of the original work. The only slightly skilled ritual and spell is probably to create a spiritual wall. But even if Roman is good at ritual magic now, he doesn't plan to make any attempts. Are you joking? That's the city of disaster, it's the source material. I am currently a weak sequence 8, 
a little warrior with no ability to resist risks. To confirm your conjecture, take the initiative to pray to the City of Disaster and contact it, or wait until you become a demigod. Even demigods are not safe, and it is best to have an angelic status. Alternatively, we can wait for Mr. Fool to have a semi-divine position and initially mobilize the power of Source Castle under his protection before attempting. Of course, before that, I also need to find ways to learn some mystical knowledge, at least preliminary learning of some ritual magic, in order to prepare for being able to connect with the Mist and join the Tarot Club in the future. Lao he is also an old bookworm, but he has never had the experience of writing online before. This time, he started writing due to his love for the mysterious master and his desire to participate to some extent. As a newcomer to a new book, he has no experience. Friends who have read it are welcome to participate in discussions. Thank you for your support. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 News of the Gathering You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 News of the Gathering for Mr. Fool or rather for Klein, Roman's emotions are actually complex. When reading the original work, Klein's image, in the words of the original text, is both a guardian and a pitiful creature. Romance deeply believed it. In this unfamiliar world, he is also willing to protect the visible beauty and strive to maintain humanity. For revenge and perseverance in his heart, he can be enemies with demigods, angels, and even gods. In order to repay the gods who have invested in him, he can choose the most difficult path. For this world, he is a true guardian. Meanwhile, he is also a truly pitiful creature. He is lonely in this world, with both Russell and Bernadelle as travelers, while Klein has nothing. He is a deity who needs to maintain his humanity with the noise on Beckland Street that does not belong to him. He is a lonely person with no one to share his heart and can only speak to himself. Especially after arriving in this world in reality, Roman witnessed the cruelty of maritime struggles, felt the pain of being promoted by magic potions, and also bore the similar sense of powerlessness that arises from being noticed by great beings. Roman deeply realized his own insignificance, so he was also full of admiration for Klein. I admire his persistence, his principles, and his ability to choose the toughest path for those, ridiculous, unworthy reasons. So, Roman wanted to join the Tarot Order not only to be sheltered by the fools, but also to find ways to help Klein in the early stages and help him better protect the world. Of course, Roman also knew well that in his previous life, he was just an ordinary person, without any special talents or abilities, nor any noble or great character. What I can do is probably to provide some help to Klein in the early stage, hoping to become a demigod or even an angel under the seat of the fool, and have a certain degree of self-protection ability in this chaotic world. That's probably it. Roman has always been a cautious person in his past life. Just, how did I become a warrior? Roman thought to himself with some self-deprecation. So, improving one's sequence and enhancing one's strength as soon as possible is Roman's short-term plan. That's why Roman chose to stay in the Seagull Squad. Although there are certain risks at sea, with the strength of the Seagull Squad, as long as it doesn't collide with the level of the Shanghai Thief General, at least self-protection should be no problem. And the teammates are not reckless and arrogant, cautious enough, and have strength, let alone Roman speculating that Captain Fred has a background in the Storm Church. This kind of environment should be sufficient for one's early development. After figuring out the path, Roman was no longer lost. Returned to bed and looked out the window at the crimson moon. Good night, fighter. The next morning, Roman, who was in a state of spiritual fullness, carried the black snake on his back and arrived at the Golden Lemon Bar located in the dock area. One way is to come over for lunch. In my memory, the grilled fish flavor at the Golden Lemon Bar is quite good. Secondly, I also wanted to report my safety to Sotos Young and tell him that I had successfully been promoted. For this father's friend who has briefly touched upon the original work, Roman can still feel his genuine concern for himself, just like his elders. Now that you have been promoted successfully, 
of course you should greet him to avoid his worries. Thirdly, I plan to inquire about the potion formula of the weapon master. Although I have just been promoted to fighting master, I feel that playing the role of fighting master is not difficult and I probably won't be able to digest the potion for too long. So the recipe and materials for weapon masters need to be prepared in advance. Sotos Young is an important figure in the Adventure Mutual Aid Society, which has a military background in Rune. In theory, he should have a way to obtain common low to medium sequence potion formulas like the Weapon Master. If he doesn't have it, then ask for news about the next Extraordinary Gathering and purchase recipes and materials at the Extraordinary Gathering. The reputation of the Adventurer Mutual Aid Association is still sufficient to support an extraordinary gathering of small and medium dot sized individuals. If you still can't get it at this party, then take the risk of finding a way to attend the extraordinary gathering organized by Mr. K. This is what Roman learned from his friend Philogen. Philogen had previously mentioned to Roman that there was a powerful Mr. K in the waters of the Rothschild Islands and his extraordinary gathering in this area was very reputable. The participants of the gathering were all extraordinary people, and the level was high. Various extraordinary weapons, materials, and spells often appeared. The timing and location of the extraordinary gathering are very uncertain. Sometimes it's in Bayam, sometimes it's in Tiana Port, and sometimes it's even held at the southernmost point of the Rothschild Sea, Long Tail Island and Roman knew as soon as he heard it. This Mr. K must be the messenger of the Aurora Society. The level of gathering he convened is definitely enough to bring up the magical potion formula of the Weapon Master and Extraordinary Materials at level 7 of the sequence. But security may not be very guaranteed. So if Roman could obtain the recipe of the Weapon Master from other sources, he temporarily does not want to participate in the extraordinary gathering organized by the crazy people of the Aurora Club. After enjoying the delicious grilled fish, Roman arrived at the second floor of the Golden Lemon Bar. Still in a familiar environment, Roman expressed his intention to Sotos Young. Congratulations on being promoted to Sequence 8, Roman, Sotos Young exclaimed with a complex expression. You are more talented than your father Ivan. He was just a warrior at your age. I don't recommend you rushing to find the next sequence of potion formulas, Sotos Young said to Roman with a serious expression. Uncle Sotos, I know I won't blindly promote myself, just prepare in advance. I believe I will quickly adapt to the fighter potion. Roman speculates that even if Soros Young has a military background, he may not be aware of the existence of role dot playing so he didn't say, digestion, only, adaptation. Sotos Young pondered for a moment and nodded. Okay, I believe you won't act recklessly. In this regard, you have more control over yourself than Ivan. Then, Sotos Young took out a piece of paper from the drawer and started writing. This is the address and secret code for the next gathering, which will be in the evening the day after tomorrow. You can prepare it. Sotos Young handed the written note to Roman, which was written in rune language. I don't have a recipe for, weapon master, here, and I don't know the corresponding auxiliary materials, but I do have this. Sotos Young had a complex expression, as if he had made some decision. He took out a grey-white tin box from the safe, sighed, and handed it to Roman. This is the relic of your father Ivan, who is a, weapon master. Dot. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Past Events. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Past Events, This is Your Father Ivan's Relic. Roman looked at Sotos Young, who seemed to have shed some burden after saying these words, with a timely expression of doubt and shock on his face, and looked straight at him. This is an unfolding that Roman never imagined. Sotos Young no longer hesitated and looked at the shocked and puzzled Roman, whispering softly. Boss didn't want me to tell you so early, but since you have been promoted to fighting master and have more talent than Ivan, you should know about this. My father. Roman asked. Your father Ivan was a master of weapons and used to be the captain of the pirate hunter. When we were young, under Bilt's leadership, 
we navigated the ship and hunted pirates together. He was so brave and reliable at that time. Sotos Young fell into memories. And Roman was also listening quietly, without questioning. He knew that Sotos Young was the organizer of the adventurer's mutual aid, Built Brando. He mainly worked on the island of Olavi, and Roman did not meet him many times. Later, tired of adventure life, we arrived on the shore and our leader led us to organize the Adventure Mutual Aid Association. In Bayam and Olavi, we had our own industry, and your father met your mother. Later, we had you, and we had his own happy family. Sotos Young exclaimed with great emotion, We don't know how your mother, who is so gentle, came to appreciate your father. However, after marrying Vivian, Ivan underwent significant changes and began to work hard to manage his own business. Can you imagine a warrior over two meters tall who was usually reckless turning into a shrewd businessman? Sotos continued with a smile, he and your mother are very affectionate, and there are hardly any arguments. We are all very pleased and envious of his changes, and happy that he has his own happiness. Perhaps the only intense argument they had was probably the time your father wanted you to become a warrior, which could be his obsession. However, as compensation, he followed your mother's advice and chose to make you believe in that the night goddess. What is my father like? Roman sighed in his heart after hearing these words, but still asked. After your mother's death, Ivan was depressed for a while, but later regained his composure and started running his business again, traveling back and forth between Bayam and the southern continent's East Byron. Just. Roman noticed that Soto's face gradually became heavy. It's just an accident that happened, Soto sighed deeply. Ivan led a caravan to negotiate business on a manor in Dongbeilong when they unexpectedly encountered a battle between the southern continent's superhumans, which unfortunately affected them. Ivan could have left, but he chose to fight the enemy to the end to protect everyone in the caravan and his companions in the manor. By the time the reinforcements arrived, Ivan had already died in battle. We only had time to bring back his body. Sotos looked at Roman and said, Your father is a hero. He didn't back down even in the face of invincible enemies. He saved dozens of lives, but he is still as reliable as ever. He is always so trustworthy, just like when he was on the pirate hunter. Roman inherited the original memories as well as those emotions. He didn't realize that his fist had been clenched and loosened. After a moment of silence, Romance looked straight at Sotos Young and said, So, who is the enemy? Sotos Young did not hesitate. Roman, I can tell you who the enemy is, but promise me not to be in a hurry for revenge, not to be blinded by hatred. The enemy is very powerful and very dangerous. You have the right to know the truth, but you must control your emotions. Roman didn't speak and just looked at Sotos Young like that. It's the Rose School, Sotos Young also looked at Roman, to be precise, it's the indulgent faction of the Rose School. The indulgent faction. Roman had already guessed in his heart, but on the surface, he still spoke up and asked. This is a news obtained from the Rune military. After the split of the Southern Rose School, the indulgent faction never gave up their pursuit of the moderate faction. Your father happened to encounter a confrontation between the two sides at the trading estate. The concept of the Rose School indulgent faction was to indulge their own desires. At that time, it should have been injured members of the indulgent faction who attacked the estate near the estate for reasons of indulgence, need for healing, or both. Sotos Young approached Roman and patted his shoulder, saying, We don't know who your specific enemies are, what their names are, or what their sequence is. Don't think about revenge either. The Rose School is an ancient, terrifying, dangerous organization with demigods or even heavenly envoys. I chose to tell you these things to be careful. If you encounter their members on the sea, don't make enemies with them unknowingly, it's very dangerous. Roman could feel Sotos Young's concern for him, but he had his own thoughts in his heart. Without confiding in Sotos Young, Roman turned his head and asked, Uncle Sotos, could you please organize an intelligence report on the main forces on the sea for me? 
When adventuring on the sea, you need to have some understanding of these things to avoid causing trouble to those who cannot afford it. No problem, you can control your emotions, that's great. I'll organize it later and you can come to me before the party the day after tomorrow to pick it up. By the way, Roman, there's one more thing. In a few days, I'll be leaving Bayam and going to Olavi Island to help the boss manage the industry there. The person who takes over from me here is Pulizan, you know. If you have anything to do in the future, you can come here to find him. If you need help in Olavi, you can go to the Sweet Lemon Bar to find me. Roman nodded and took the not heavy but heavy tin box. I know, Uncle Sotos, thank you. Watching Sotos rub his forehead and remain silent, Roman bid farewell and returned to his home in the dock area. Silently returned to his bedroom. To be honest, Roman never expected to receive such news before going to see Sotos Young. Regardless of whether it was the influence of the original, Roman had to admit that this story had some impact on him. Roman felt that he might have a much deeper understanding of the Rose School than Sotos Young. So although he promised Sotos Young to give up revenge, Roman had already decided in his heart that if possible, he would not miss some opportunities to strike the Rose School. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Gathering You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Gathering At the beginning of the Fifth Age, with the fall of the Grim Reaper, the Argus family gradually lost control of the Star Plateau and the Pass Valley, where they had their own extraordinary organization, the Rose School. At first, the Rose School believed in the bound God, advocated moderation, and established a religious ritual system, including laws. The formal members lived a simple and low-desire life to cope with the aftermath of gaining power. One day, the oracle suddenly added words such as indulgence. Many people began to change and restore the ancient and bloody primitive sacrificial system. Later on, some senior members of the school began to discreetly promote the God Bound as the incarnation of the Mother Tree of Desire. The Rose School grasps the Prisoner Path, and the So. called Indulgent School no longer suppresses their instinctive, twisted, and suppressed bloodthirsty desires. When encountering a full moon or other situations such as injury, the desires will completely erupt. So, did my father encounter a member of the indulgent faction who was injured by the moderate faction, and in the end, the other party launched an attack on the estate due to an outbreak of desire, ultimately leading to my father's death. At that time, he was a weapon master. Although he had not fought for a long time, as a representative profession with strong individual attack power, if he wanted to kill a weapon master in the event of his own injury, he would at least need a living corpse, which is sequence six, and perhaps also have werewolves, or lunatics, as helpers. Madman. Roman thought of Oster, the blood hand, who was killed in an attack on his own merchant ship on his way back to Bayam. Based on the situation of the battle at that time, he should have been a madman. The Rose School has some extraordinary control over the prisoner sequence, and generally there are no wild lunatics. At that time, I doubted whether Oster would be a peripheral member of the Rose School. I really have a grudge against the Rose School. I have a feud with the Rose School for killing my father, and my first killing in this world is also a member of the peripheral organization of the Rose School. Except for a few moderate members, most of the members of the Rose School were cruel, bloodthirsty, cruel, and bloodthirsty. Roman had no good impression of them themselves, and now, it has further strengthened his determination to hunt members of the Rose School. After killing Oster and piloting the blood sail to Bayam, I think our team should have already entered the site of some members of the Rose School. Although there may be speculation about the background of the Storm Church, it is highly likely that those lunatics will not care. If given the opportunity, they should retaliate against us, as this is a vast sea, Roman muttered to himself. Remind the captain when you turn around to avoid sudden danger. However, in retrospect, the captain with an official background should not be afraid. When your sequence is higher, you can go to Beckland and wait to hunt those members of the indulgent faction. In Beckland, angels are also afraid to act recklessly, and the intensity and time of demigod actions will be limited, after all, 
there are several archbishops and senior deacons of the Orthodox Church there. Even indulgent individuals who are influenced by desire will learn to restrain themselves in Beckland. Therefore, members of the indulgent faction of the Beckland Rose Hunting School are relatively safer and can avoid the high dot level power of the Rose Hunting School to the greatest extent possible. I'm still too weak, Roman couldn't help but sigh. We need to quickly digest the magic potion and improve the sequence. Fighters cannot provide themselves with enough sense of security. Putting the belongings from his father close to him, Roman picked up the note with the extraordinary party address and secret code written on it. At the extraordinary gathering the day after tomorrow, you can purchase the magic potion formula of the Weapon Master, and also see if you can harvest some useful spells or some useful extraordinary knowledge. If there is no gain, contact Philogen and seek to attend a gathering organized by Mr. K. Roman looked at some books in his own study that introduced extraordinary knowledge, which were too basic and fragmented, and even had many errors and loopholes. Roman couldn't help but marvel at how difficult it is to be a wild extraordinary. Not enough knowledge, no stable magic potion formula and material sources. Even if one gains knowledge and recipes, they cannot determine their authenticity, and may even go crazy because they know knowledge they shouldn't know. It's really difficult to move forward in this chaotic and crazy world without a support. Roman had a sufficient understanding of the top-dot-level knowledge of this world, and under the protection of an unknown force, he gained this knowledge without falling into madness. However, for the fundamental knowledge of the extraordinary world, such as ritual magic, talismanship, and rune literature, languages that can evoke extraordinary powers, such as elven, dragon, and ancient Hermes, are almost completely unknown. The only slightly different language may be Old Kazakh. But this is not enough at all. Perhaps you can purchase some basic knowledge from Tony, the reasoning student, in the team. I don't know if he will sell it. After all, for Tony, who has a background in the Storm Church, this knowledge may not entirely belong to him, but rather to the Storm Church behind him, and he may not be able to freely sell it. Roman also doesn't want to make his friends difficult. In the following two days, Roman lived exceptionally quietly. While familiarizing oneself with exercising one's promoted body and acquiring new fighting skills at home, one walks through the tavern in the dock area to taste various specialties of Bayam. On the evening of May 9th, Roman followed the address on the note given to him by Sotos Young and arrived at Coco Street in the dock area. He walked along a small path and after several turns, he arrived at the back door of a building. Taking out a pre-prepared black iron mask and wearing a black cloak, Roman confronted the guard at the door with a secret message and walked down the dark stairs to the second floor of the building. This is like a messy reception hall, with a few coffee tables randomly placed inside, surrounded by many sofas and chairs. When Roman came in, several people were already sitting scattered. Roman tugged at his cloak and found a chair in the corner to sit down. Sotos Young introduced the situation of the gathering to Roman, and the adventure mutual aid was just one of the channels for the gathering, not the organizer. The organizer of the gathering had a mysterious background, but due to possessing extraordinary items with notarization ability, they convened this relatively credible gathering and opened up many channels such as the Adventure Mutual Aid Association gradually spreading the reputation of this gathering in a small circle. Upon hearing this, Roman thought that the ability of the sun pathway that exists on the sea is either an extraordinary member of the storm church's sun pathway, or a member of the storm church who possesses extraordinary items of the sun pathway. Otherwise, the followers of the tyrant would not allow an extraordinary person through the path of the sun to drift on the sea. Especially, this is Bayam, the capital of the Rothschild Islands and one of the largest cities in the central Sunnian Sea region. There are multiple bishops and several teams of punishers, as well as the Archbishop of the Storm Church stationed here, who is also a senior deacon of punishers, and the true ruler of the extraordinary world of the archipelago, the Sea King, and Arn Kotman. So this is highly likely to be an extraordinary gathering under the watchful eye of the Storm Church. After a while, some figures hidden in black robes and behind masks came up one after another. 
A tall figure with golden hair and a gray white mask sitting in the middle of the living room looked around and knocked on the table in front of him, saying, Time is up, the party is starting. End of this chapter.